Is there anything Keep you can give us, like, you know, like, you know, McDonald's use this to make it yeah, okay. so people... I, I, I'll give you one that's, <laughs> that's interesting that's, um, it's not productized yeah. yet, but it is basically uh, uh, really hones in on some of the cap capabilities of blockchain generically, right? Um, that, uh, how do I say this? Um, uh, on online uh, prize giveaways, right? Mm -hmm. um, we, we've seen some cases where even the videos have been edited where, you know, you think, okay, that, that looks fixed, right? Uh, big prizes, you know, if they're giving a Bitcoin away or they're giving a, a car away or something, right? Is it fair, right? Is it just their buddy that's, uh, that's signed up and they're, they're doing whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, one way or another, you know, and we did this, uh, we, we did a, a silly little demo of it, um, last week, last week or week before, um, where we had an AMA, um, we had a 24 hour live stream two, two and a half weeks ago, um, where we did this, uh, demonstration of our scaling during that we had to fill time. So I did a bunch of AMAs, you know, it was very tiring. <laughs> I stayed up the whole 24. Um, and we gave away the original keyboard, uh, that I had built and that I used when I first coded it. But in order to make sure, you know, to show, to demonstrate this possibility, we, um, we put uh, a, uh, all of the entries on chain, okay? We described how uh, the, the contest was going to work on chain, and we described which Bitcoin block was going to uh, decide the, the results, right? And so it's all about time. That is, if I can prove that I put that uh, transaction on chain first and it made it all, all, all the way up to Bitcoin and Ethereum, Ethereum Classic and Binance. So anybody can look and see that that um, contest rules and that the, uh, the entries were, were memorialized. Then you, you fast forward about a day, you know, and I basically said, so it'd be approximately the, the next day that a certain block height Bitcoin, we would take the block hash, and we would do a simple operation on it and we would come to, you know, from, from the block hash, we would be able to de deterministically uh, point to the winning entry. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, so that's not a dragon chain specific thing. Now, you know, we're building, uh, we have two smart contracts already in there that help to do that. Uh, one part was not in there to help do that. That's, I had written some stuff to pull the block hash uh, out. Um, and I, in fact, it was a shell script uh, that used curl, right? I mean, it was, it was radically simple. But it was like, okay, um, that uh, uh, one way or another, I was in a meeting when, when uh, that block happened. Um, and the winner was able to say, hey, I, I think I won it, right? And everybody else was able to say, yeah. Everybody else was also able to determine that this was the winner without us announcing anything. And that was a very interesting thing because the winner can determine that it's them. And the uh, everyone else who participated or was watching it at all can also check it um, and know that, you know, there was uh, not a way for us to, to, to pick or to pretend like somebody won it that was, you know, maybe more uh, a friend or something silly, right? So that's one. I mean, that's, and that is a very um, generic blockchain capability, but it's a, all about time. And uh, I guess measurable proof. Um, mm -hmm. That's one. So, can you tell <laughs> us anything about your team? Like, how big is your team these days? Um, gosh, we uh, we ha we've been we've been about thirty people. We've uh, we've made some cuts because we just finished uh, finished out core, and we're about to spin off uh, uh, one big product, and we're getting closer to ready to spin off another product to separate uh, entities. Um, so they can focus. Um, and so, uh, the, the core team is, uh, uh, right now, uh, about a dozen, a dozen devs. Um, and we're, we're, um, about to roll out. We have a, a separate team that, that works on a product called dragon den. That is a, uh, community forum and it has really interesting modeling. Uh, the, the philosophy is uh, to avoid advertisements, yet to reward uh, uh, content creators for quality content and to reward 
content evaluators for pointing out which content is, uh, and, and as long as there's consensus and you get a trending item, uh, you, uh, you earn uh, tokens. You, there's, a, there's a matter token. Um, we also have a, com uh, a really an interesting pattern that uh, kind of like subreddits, right? That you have communities that can be big, they can be small, they can be uh, toxic, they can be friendly. It's, there's, there's culture inside of all of them, right? And that uh, those communities um, are ownable, that there, there will be uh, non-fungible tokens that, uh, that attribute ownership of those and they get a cut of all the traffic. So there's an incentive for the people that are moderating, managing, and, and uh, really working in the community that they are actually rewarded. Um, so there's a bunch of really neat stuff happening with that. Um, we have a partnership that uh, has just been launched and uh, we, we should have some good uh, creators, some good uh, content creators that are coming in from that partnership. And it was intended, I will tell you, as a, uh, uh, here's, here's a use case for you on loyalty. And, and this is kind of where that platform started that, you know, we're in Telegram a lot, we're on Twitter a lot, um, and you probably know how toxic uh, the, uh, the crypto world can be, right? At the same time, we have, you know, really dedicated and beautiful people that uh, are in our community that, you know, really help us, um, amazing yeah. people. Uh, and, and, you know, having, having the crypto and I think having also the trolls come in kind of hardens that community. I mean, we have really solid people. Um, and we had some trolling going on and I mentioned to one of, uh, one of the people in there that's like, you know, what's really needed is a, a crypto aware uh, forum, you know, that is, you know, if, if you could plug it in so that uh, we could have attributes based upon the, the, the holding of our tokens. And cause we had at the time something called DDSS, um, I don't know if you know, do you know anything about any of that stuff? Um, okay. So in, in December of, uh, 2017, um, we came up with something that initially was called dragon days of slumber. Okay. And it was kind of the, the flipped, uh, idea of uh, Bitcoin days destroyed. Do you, do you remember that? Um, where they, they, in, in the Bitcoin world, it was, a measure of how many old tokens had recently moved, right? So it was kind of a, a scary thing. You know, if, if you have a huge amount of, of Bitcoin days destroyed, it means old money's moved, right? So that's going to affect the market. That was kind of what was watched. I, I don't ever hear anyone talking about it now, even yeah, if I haven't heard that term. <laughs> and so I, I was like, we need to use that because uh, uh, the, the basis of everything in blockchain is, really time. The fact that you can prove that something happened between two points, a uh, beginning and end of a block, which means that you can do all the things that Bitcoin does, you know, the protection against double spend, the, sc the, the scarcity, everything else. It's beautiful. And so I wanted to use that. So we created this Dragon Days of Slumber score where instead of it, it measuring how much has moved and, you know, to get some anxiety <laughs> pumped up in people, um, it, was, uh, it was how long it had not moved. So we were measuring uh, if you have one dragon in a wallet, um, that the longer you, you know, every day you hold it, you get one, one point, one, one DDSS. And, uh, we, we've now rebranded it to time because it was too hard to explain to people. Um, but what it does though, is it gave us right out the gate, um, a, an amazing ability to measure loyalty, um, and, and the strength of hands or whatever you'd want to do. But, but the great thing was, uh, because we had a lot, we knew, you know, we came out of Disney. So we had a lot of normies that came in. This is the first time they'd ever messed with crypto. So there was a ton of education, you know, it was like, don't ever, uh, you know, do this. Don't ever do that. Uh, if anybody comes in and it looks like it has my profile pic and they say that you need to go and do this and, and buy something, don't do it. Um, that I will sign any message with any announcement. I'll sign it with this Bitcoin address. Right. Um, and so we, we had a really good, uh, even non-technical people that knew and nobody ever lost money. It was beautiful. Um, part of that was we didn't want, uh, you know, like what, what happened with Mt. Gox. Um, uh, there's a lot more stability now than there was even in 17. Um, but 
we didn't want people to keep them in the exchange, right? Multiple reasons, but to the primary being uh, security. And so we were trying to incentivize people to, to get a hardware wallet, you know, put your dragons on hardware wallet and all your crypto, right? And what this did is this score was only usable if you owned the keys. And the score we, the first use case we had was for, for beta, you know, so when we released um, anything in beta, we didn't have to have a sign up list. We didn't have to do any of that stuff. We could say, look, um, this beta is rolling out. Maybe it's extremely early. So we, we want to keep it maybe less than 500 people that are, that are potential to use it. So we would basically say, okay, we probably have a, a 10 or 20% max uh, uh, participation. So we would set, um, we would know based upon the scores, how many people could possibly come in and then set the level of uh, DDSS uh, or time that someone would have to have to come in and use this new uh, feature. So we did that a lot. Uh, we used it inside of our incubator where um, in order to get in earlier uh, or at a better discount for purchasing tokens that you had to have higher time. Um, that worked really, really well um, until we couldn't do that anymore. And um, Sounds like coin, like coin age. Yes, it's the same yeah. as coinage. Yeah. yeah, and so um, so we did that, and uh, now the beauty is, uh, and we have uh, an interesting patent on the scaling of a blockchain network based upon this uh, same mechanism, where um, our entire DragonNet system is uh, selection is random, right? So at every level, you can run a node. Uh, say you're running a level two node that just does basic uh, validation of transactions that you have a uh, uh, there are three level twos that go out for every block so you have a three and I think there are three or four hundred um, level two nodes I'd have to look um, and it's purely random whether you get selected um, and then a level three node is selected a level four is selected and then one of the level fives is selected right now Everyone running a node has some amount of time applied from zero to however many billion. And when you have that block, um, that the block is uh, fully verified um, that the breakdown of the fees paid by the business are split according to time applied. So if you have a billion applied and everybody else has a million applied, you're going to get the lion's share, obviously, of that fee. Now, on the business side, and that's all based on time. On the business side, um, we were really uh, trying to model a way that a traditional business could come in and kind of be abstracted away from all the crypto, all the you know the coin volatility. They you know they could they can definitely come in and pay with crypto, um, but they can also just pay with cash. And when when they're paying with dollars or euros, it's converted uh, at a fixed price and we basically fix the price every month um so that uh there's no volatility during that month and they don't care it's like look i'm paying my hundred bucks i'm paying my my thousand bucks uh and i don't care if that buys uh 500 token or 5 million tokens doesn't matter to me um i just know what i'm getting for what i'm spending now if if you're a crypto person you can come in and tune it really tightly but the beauty is that the fees are deterministic. So if I know that this node is going to be um, spitting out, uh, you know, five transactions a week, I don't care if it's max fee. If it's fifty cents, it doesn't matter. Right? It's fine. Um, however, if I know that I'm going to be doing five million a week, then I'm going to think, okay, I'm going to try to push that fee down. And if I apply time, there's a, a scale that, you know, I think it's right now. If you apply a billion time, you get uh, every transaction is a hundredth of a cent. Right. And the beauty is it's deterministic. It doesn't matter uh, how uh, how much traffic goes through the network. It doesn't matter um, uh, if, you know, the next uh, uh, some viral uh, application is built and launched this week. Uh, the two things most important to you are the fact that your fees are uh, deterministic. They are known. You know, they're predictable um, and controllable. And the second is that your transactions can still get on chain, right? Which, and we have three uh, architectural um, uh, abstractions or structures that, that make that possible, which, you know, the one is the fact that your node is 
totally independent. Even if, even if it lost connection with the rest of the network, your node can still do business, right? Um, the second is that the other uh, chains, a lot of them are running in cloud. Um, and if they aren't, they're at least running mm -hmm. on uh, Kubernetes. So there's some level of scaling. So um, basically they won't fall over. So if you have an orders of magnitude increase in traffic, the network can take it because the scarcity is not hardware based. The scarcity is time based. Um, and that was the so, slip. <laughs> so what's next for a, dra for a dragon chain? Do you have any great new products? You said you had, you, you'll, basically created two projects or two products were they for the open market or were they for specific customers that are that have a use case you um, develop for them uh one of them is kind of a i guess uh both we have we do have a partner that directly wanted most of these things that is the the den platform uh that we're partnering with a, a group called creator works that uh is um they represent creators and, and you know, people with uh, uh, shows and, you know, uh, uh, a lot of people call them influencers, but they're um, one way or another, uh, try to help them get more bang for their buck from the, the people who might be, you know, the, the, uh, the people that are supporting them um, and also to protect their IP, right? The fact that they uh, a lot of times have content that's stolen or repurposed or, you know, anything else. So there's there are a lot of really interesting things there. Um, and, and also demonetization, right? Some of the platforms themselves are working against these people. Um, so that's one. Uh, the other is uh, Dragon Factor. That is a decentralized identity platform that, uh, that has some really interesting, uh, unique features with, um, you know, everybody knows decentralized identity, you know, own your own uh, uh, ID and own your own uh, uh, multi-factor um, uh, but we have some interesting angles on making it more uh, uh, or, organic, um, you know, grandma proof, um, where it's friendly to non-crypto people. Very, very important. And we have some interesting angles on uh, 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 making it into a marketplace. So it's not just a, uh, a standard you know, one or, or two-dimensional system that... Uh, you know, here are my factors. I mean, that's all awesome, amazing stuff. But what we're trying to do is to make it so that there's a way for me to measure whether you're a real human or not, whether you are, you know, you know, the Jeff or not, right? Um, um, and to try to make it so that it's so simple that, uh, that a, a non-crypto, a non-technical person can come and use this, you know, to post on social media, right? And um, our first rollout of that is something that's, it's not going to be spun out, but it is a product is called Eternal. Um, and that's, that's been live since um, late 2018. Um, we built it to demonstrate the interchain capabilities because no one quite, un it's very hard to visualize a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you go to eternal.dragonchain.com, you can see, uh, and there's some free components. You can post anything in there. Uh, uh, and it, it, it even uses Markdown. If it's in plain, you hit the plain text, you, you do Markdown and it will save it all the way to uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic and, and Binance. And um, you can download it later. So even if we went away, you could always have the proof all the way to those chains that you said this thing at that time, right? Um, and you, you don't have to, uh, you know, if you own the system, you know, pure Dragon Chain, if that was your own system, no one would ever have access to that. I mean, this is, it was a demonstration system, you know, kind of a, a way to show people how this works. And uh, if you, if you uh, refer to save the tweet and have a command of blockchain or save to the blockchain in hashtags, it will automatically do that for you as well. Um, or if you put the URL of a tweet in, it, so we, there, are, there are a lot of people that are basically, um, uh, posting tweets there that are provable after the fact, just, you know, as an interesting thing. We've had a couple of uh, uh, really cool uh, ones that were deleted um, out of embarrassment or something else um, that are nice. now provable on chain forever, right? So, and that's, and it's more than anything, it started as a, um, uh, and, and maybe this is something that would be understandable. Sorry to keep going on so long, but, um, that, uh, you know, we did talk to them about identity at Twitter, right? And I, they maybe aren't ready yet, right? They're trying to do some things, but um, 
we decided, okay, they, they aren't ready. They don't, they, maybe they don't understand how it could really affect their users. So let's just build it. Right. And the first pass is, you know, if you have an eternal premium account, you can sign your tweet. So we, you know, we, it, it's a little loose. So if a, a true security guru is not going to love it because it's, it's a browser or a mobile based, uh, key generated in, in, in the browser. Um, it, that will be rolled into Dragon Factor, so it'll be much stronger later. But in the in the very least, right now, the intent is to say, look, I'm Joe, I tweeted this, and you can go and check that it really was tweeted with, you know, and signed by my key, and and prove that it happened at the time because it's, you know, provable to Bitcoin and, and Ethereum combined, right? Um, uh, and um, we're, we're adding, I think, a, a new feature is rolling out either today or, or next week, um, that it'll even let you do threaded, signed, threaded tweets on blockchain. Um, and, you know, it's not the most radical thing in the world, but it is really beautiful because it's something that is missing, you know? So, like, I, I always thought when we're doing announcements, especially as a crypto company, that's so much needed to be able to sign stuff and to be able to prove that we said something, even to do pre-announcements, to be able to say, look, I'm going to, and I do this a, a lot. Uh, some people get confused. I'll take the uh, transaction hash and I will tweet that. Uh, so it's not searchable, but uh, what it is, is I've either, I've, I've documented, uh, like say when we do certain interviews, especially if they might be contentious. We've had some cases where, you know, it's the crypto world. Uh, so we'll typically put all of our, the questions and answers on chain That's before we cool. deliver them. If they, if they decide, oh, you know, we're going to, we're going to say you said something else. I'm just like, no, this is what I said. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. It's yeah. There's just some really cool uh, ways to use it. And it, we haven't completely uncovered uh, all of the possibilities, right. Which is the point. It's uh, we will have constant uh, people come in and say, Hey guys, what if we did this? And we're like, yeah, let's, you know, let's figure it out. Um, um, so yeah, there's a lot, I don't know. I could go on for a long, long talk. <laughs> All right. Nice. Nice. Well, uh, just to be, you know, respectful of, of Jeff's time and your time, Joe, I definitely want to uh, kind of wrap this up a little bit, but where can people find out more about Dragon Chain? Where would you like them to go? Um, uh, I, I would say the enterprise or business would probably be dragonchain.com. Okay. Um, anybody can come to the uh, Dragon Chain Telegram uh, channels. There's a, dra a Dragon Talk and um, there, we, there, I think there, there are a lot of different community groups, uh, community run groups that are specialized in trading versus uh, use cases or strategic things. Um, and we answer stuff 24 seven in there. I'm in there all the time. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the things people have compared Divi and Dragon. They said that, you know, like you and I are two of the most accessible CEOs in crypto. Same. We're always there. My partner, Nick, also is just always there. We can people, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I, I personally DM every single person in Telegram that comes in our Telegram group, every new person to say hi and find out where yeah. they're from and how wow. they found us and this kind of stuff. And, and I've heard that about you, too, that you, uh, you know, you actually return. Yeah you know, return messages and say hi to everybody. And it makes such a big yep. difference in the feeling people get it does. about your, your community. It does. The, the culture is amazing. I, that's the thing that, that I've, and I've heard good things about yours too. In fact, I had somebody in here yesterday with a giant fan. I said, oh, I, I thought that I had the, this talk yesterday and he went, he went off. Right. he's like, you know, so, so it's like, I've, I've heard really good things about you guys too. So, um, and, and that's, that's the thing. We'll answer anything. Uh, sometimes we can't answer uh, some, some people will ask questions that we legally can't answer, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, right. There's, I hate, I hate there's a limited tra transparency <laughs> because there's certain things you can't say, certain things you're not allowed to talk about because your lawyers will kill you Yes, and that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, I would say, yeah, if, if you want the direct absolute, then hit Telegram. Um, we're going to start moving everything over to then so it'll be captured and stuff. Um, and uh, otherwise, yeah, the website and just reach out. You know, we have... We have people that will get back with you and especially if you have ideas, you know, uh, interesting things that could be integrated. I mean, I, I want to talk to you, uh, Jeff, about a potential interchain. So mm -hmm. at some point we should, we should talk, right? Maybe I'll just, I'll ping you, right? Yeah, we can talk about that another day. 
and I'm, I'm interested to hear your, your ideas about that because we're doing a little bit with our blockchain as well to connect us with other chains and certain very specific use cases that we, that we anticipate that we need. They're, they're, for us, it's stuff that's really easy to, for people to understand, right? They're very simple. They're just things that are gonna make people's lives easier in, with payments and things like yes. this. Connecting, yes. connecting accounts together. So with one, one click, you can change your Bitcoin into Tivi or your Bitcoin into Euros and, and this kind of thing. Nice. or do fractions or all kinds of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and with dragon, you know, I, I've seen, you know, you know, this interview has been interesting to me because, you know, as a, as a CEO and founder, you're also an engineer, right? So when I ask you a question, you come at it from an engineering point of view. Yes. And, and, and I, and it gets very complicated really fast. Right. And I kept oh. trying to, <laughs> trying to drag some, e some easy to understand things out of you. <laughs> and, and I still, I would love, I would love to see like a, a list of use cases. And it's not just Dragon Chain, there's so many cryptocurrencies that people find very obtuse, you know, and if you're not a developer, you can't understand mm -hmm. what people are doing. Of course, the developers that are all watching this are going, wow, this is amazing. That's really cool. I didn't know you could do that. But for people that aren't developers, there's their, you know, your mind starts to drift. It's almost like listening to a foreign language, right? Yes. And at some point, you know, when you're trying to attract people to use cases. This is something I've been talking about recently is that in order to, the really great use cases, I think for blockchain are not going to be developed, are not going to be invented by blockchain people. They're going to be invented by dreamers and artists yep. and designers and these kind of people. Yep. So trying to, trying to bring these things down to earth so people can really understand them. I think that would be important for you to, is to really work on, mm -hmm. like you said, I forget how you said it, but you're alluding to the fact that you need to make the bring this, you know, dragon train for grandmas kind of a thing. Yep. Come up with come up with in your platform a way that people can just have tools, you know, tools yep. that they can use yep. and not have to worry about all the crypto part of it, right? Exactly. So where does that come? Is that like what you're going to focus on for the next year? Yes. Yeah, so in fact, I will say this probably, if I, I can even make, if, if this needs to be the last thing, it's probably very important. Probably the biggest focus uh, is to uh, to go out and, and sell, promote, um, and try to get people to build things that aren't blockchain, right? I mean, they, they are, they're blockchain, right? And uh, the, what we want though is that the unique capability is there because there's a blockchain uh, behind it, but the people, the people who are buying it don't, they don't care at all about the blockchain, you know, that, and that's right. the point. That's, and you know, we made, it, it was very, uh, hard but that that's a lot of what we've done in the past uh, year and a half where abstracting those things away so that you can use a system without caring about that right um, and yet still make it possible to care about that it's, you know it's not easy <laughs> this the, the team's done some crazy amazing things so um, but that's that's primarily it if you can sell stuff that's it's a GDPR uh, solution um, that lets you prove compliance lets you do things that you couldn't do with a traditional system um, but you don't care that it's blockchain behind it, you know? So mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's very true. Yeah. Cool. You know, so I, like a use case I can think of right now that would be interesting for me is if you could have a bot say in telegram where if somebody, if you're talking, chatting with somebody, you want to, to store that chat on dragon chain and prove yes. that it actually happened over time because people can go in and they can delete that not just for them, but for you. Yes. So somebody might be saying something, they may be threatening you or something like that. It would be amazing if you could just have a button that says, this is not, you know, that's now start starting to store this on the chain so you could prove later on if you had to sue that person or prove that they were threatening you yep. or trolling you or whatever it is. That would be like a, a use case, right? Yeah, that's that everybody can understand. That's a beautiful one, yeah. I mean, I, I've done that manually. I've, I've had mm -hmm. people, most right. people we take screenshots, right? But you could have yep. a one, you know, you could have a slash dragon record yep. or, or something simple like that. They would just start start doing it. Yep, that's that's a great idea. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Right on. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, Joe, and telling us about Dragon Chain. If you guys are listening in on SoundCloud, Spotify, or iTunes, be sure to check out the show notes. You'll be able to find the link to the Telegram. Uh, to Dragon Chain, as well as more information. And thanks again, Jeff, for jumping on, asking some great questions.